Okay, now that our skill is set up and we know how to go about testing, we can take a look at the code and the, uh, make some changes to our skill service code. So the code that we, we have here again is just an example that's provided by Amazon and the example is written in JavaScript because we're using Node.js. And we're not going to dive deep into this right now, but I do want to point out a, a couple of things. So when you're in the, uh, the Lambda editor here, there is a pretty nice code editor that you can use to edit this code and you can expand it. And um, if you're working on more complex skills, you, you'll probably want to use a local code editor. For, but for what we're doing, this is, um, this, this is great and you can see all of the code here, make changes to the code here and the, the files that uh, are associated with the code. In this um, case here, we've got, because this is Node.js, uh, we've got some Node modules that are included and Node modules are reusable code. And the notable one here is the, uh, the Ask SDK. And the Ask is the Alexa Skills Kit SDK. And it is a, uh, a module that makes working with the requests from the Alexa service really simple. So rather than having to write code to uh, decipher what is in that JSON message that's coming over and to generate a JSON message going back, the Alexa Skills Kit SDK uh, provides methods that make that really easy for us to do without writing a whole lot of code. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more in a later lesson, but for right now, um, let's just look at making a, uh, a couple of simple changes in here, and then I want to talk about the the relationship between the code and the uh, the interaction model because that's uh, that's pretty important. So um, for starters, making a change that goes back to uh, your user through the Alexa service is just a matter of making a change to your skill service. So in this case here, um, you know, here's your fact. If I just change this to here's your cool fact, and save it, um, save up here. Now, if I go over and test here and just say open space facts, Here's your cool fact. Despite being farther from the sun, Venus experiences higher temperatures than Mercury. So the change that I made is uh, immediately available for the user. So any changes that you make in your skill service, the Alexa service is um, going to use whatever the skill service sends back and provided that the, uh, the response is a, a format that it can use, it will be good to go. The, um, the, the, the part that is a little bit more involved is figuring out what the Alexa service is sending over and mapping what the user wants to a, uh, a, a code function that can handle it. And that is done through the interaction model. And so I'm gonna talk through what's going on in a little bit more detail in the interaction model and how that relates to the, the code. And then we'll, um, we'll, in the next lesson, we'll go through some examples of using that. But first, I just wanna talk through it. So the, uh, the interaction model, like I explained earlier, is, um, is it's basically instructions for training the machine learning that is uh, behind Alexa so that it can understand requests from a user that are requests for your skill and functionality that your skill provides. So in the um, interaction model, and I'm just looking at the, uh, the JSON editor here, um, which you can create the entire interaction model just in uh, code, like through the JSON editor, like this. The, um, the, the, the key pieces that you want to understand are the um, first, the invocation name, and we set up the invocation name through the visual editor, or actually, well, we copied and pasted this in, but the invocation name is the name that the user is going to use to invoke or start the skill. And then um, in addition to starting the skill, the skill will provide functionality and, and functionality is referred to as, uh, as intense or uh, requested functionality is identified and uh, referenced as intense. It's a better way to say it, I, I think. So, um, so an intent is what your skill can do and 
it maps to what the user wants and what the user wants or is requesting is derived from utterances, the things that a user says. And so we provide along with intents, we provide samples of things that a user might say to uh, tell Alexa uh, how to recognize when the user wants something specifically that our skill provides. And there are two kinds of intents. There are custom intents, and that is what this get new fact intent is. And then there's also uh, built-in intents. And built-in intents, we, uh, can, we can add, and some of them are required, like these ones are required. But built-in intents are, are default functionality that is part of the, uh, the Alexa service. And so, uh, for example, the ones that we're looking at here, like the cancel intent, uh, recognizes when a user is um, wanting to cancel a, uh, a session with uh, a skill. And help is pretty self-explanatory, but um, is going to recognize when a user is asking for help within a skill. Uh, and so these built-in intents here are uh, kind of ready to go. You don't have to provide utterances for them. In some cases, you can extend their, uh, their capabilities uh, with uh, additional utterances, but it depends on the the intent and there's lots there's lots of different built-in intents in fact take a look at that real quick so um, there is a library of lots of different intents from uh, you know types of musics and artists and you know all, all kinds of things so Alexa can recognize lots of different things that a user would say even without you having to train it how to do that um, and so the, the the next part of this though is is how the intent maps to functionality that's provided by the skill service. So at, at the the high level flow, we've got a, a case where a user is going to open up a skill without providing any other information other than the fact that they want to open the skill. And we did that in the test here when we said um, uh, open space facts. And in that case there, uh, the message that was sent over was, let's do that. Um, Here's your cool fact. Jupiter has the shortest day of all the planets. Okay, so in, in this case here, all we did was ask the Alexa service to invoke the space facts skill. In this next example, I'm going to ask for a fact. And this is... Here's your cool fact. A year on Mercury is just 88 days long. So in the example of this skill, it's, it's, it's pretty tough to see the difference because the response that we get back is the same. We get a random fact no matter what we do. But if you look at the request here, so in the first case, uh, the request that came in to the skill service, if you look at it, um, is a launch request. And, and this is how our skill service knows that uh, this was a case where the user was just opening the, the skill up and, and not doing anything else. In this example here, the request came in, uh, but I asked space facts for a fact and the Alexa service recognized that in this case, the request was for a specific intent. And that intent was the intent called get new fact intent. And the way that the Alexa service was able to determine that this utterance was for this intent is because of the samples that were provided. And so if we go back over here, and look at our uh, get fact intent. You can see the uh, the samples in here, and so the uh, the utterance, the, the things that users say, uh, are, are going to provide the information that the Alexa service needs to uh, determine what it is that the user wants. In a really simple case, the utterance is just going to map to an intent and it will be enough information to uh, tell the Alexa service and our skill service to execute whatever code is going to handle that intent. 
In some cases, however, intents need additional information from the user before they can be fulfilled. So um, this get new fact intent isn't an example of one, but let's say we uh, had a skill where a user could order a pizza. In that case, um, we would need to know the size of the pizza, the toppings, um, the delivery information, and the parameters, uh, size, topping, those things are referred to as slots. So slots are parameter values that we need to fulfill intents that are extracted from uh, an utterance. And we'll get into this in, uh, in more detail later on. So this is just kind of high level talking through the, these pieces. And so minimally, you will have a, a, a launch request where all the service knows is that the user is invoking your skill. Uh, you can have a launch request that includes an utterance that would not just tell the Alexa service that you're trying to launch um, a skill, but it would also provide information to map the request to an intent. And then in uh, some cases, you'll have intents that require additional information to be fulfilled. And that is um, information that is held in parameters called slots. And then um, the, the other point on slots is you can provide slot information as part of an utterance and uh, a launch. So if I had an intent that was um, to order a pizza, I might say, and let's pretend my invocation name is, um, you know, pizza skill. I could say, Alexa, tell pizza skill I want to order a pizza. And that might map to my order intent. But my order intent might need to know what toppings I need. So if I didn't provide any slot that would be filled for toppings, the intent would respond with, um, okay, what kind of toppings would you like? But the user might also say, Alexa, um, ask pizza skill to order a pizza with pepperoni on it. And in that case, I'm getting an utterance that is not just mapping to the intent, but also um, providing information to fill the slot. And again, we're going to come back to this because we're going to use it as an example. So right now, I just wanted to, uh, to, to talk through it. And um, that information, slot being uh, the, the intent being uh, uh, requested and the slot information is all going to get passed as a part of the request. And we're going to need to handle that as it comes into uh, our skill service. And the, um, the Alexa SDK is going to help us do that. We're going to go into that and uh, walk through an example of creating an intent that has a slot and passing that slot information over to our skill service and responding in the next lesson.